Ugh, I'm gonna be here a while. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the shop. So my channel has hit a pretty interesting milestone. And I'd just like to thank all you guys for subscribing to my channel. Got some uh, mail uh, in the last couple weeks that I've been kind of holding on to to try to get the uh, my clamps done. Uh, Kimber Zellick sent me some awesome stickers. Got some, uh, got his beautiful smiling face in the negative here. Kind of a pinkish rose color. And I think there's a holographic, oh yeah, there's the, so he's got a little channel on YouTube as well. He's, he's got, he's making some innovations with his little mini lathe there and he's uh, building up his shop. He's got a tool cutter grinder and stuff like that now too, so. And another YouTuber sent me some stickers as well. I'd like to thank him again for the double shout out he just gave me today. I was uh, pretty surprised. But uh, that's Harold Waters, the Amateur Redneck Workshop. And he does a really uh, really awesome live stream every Sunday at around 2 p.m. Central Time, I think. And he's sent me a whole schwack of stickers too. Man, I feel cheap. I don't know. They're going to be everywhere in this shop. Check that out. He's an old timer out of old Houston, Texas there. And, you know, he calls himself an amateur, but I think he knows more than he lets on. But he's built some pretty interesting projects. He's got a pretty functional workshop in his, in his garage there. And, his, and the live streams and even get some superstars on there. So go ahead and give that guy a, sh a check and check out his channel. He's got some good stuff going on there. All right. Now this is the hardest part of any uh, YouTube video is putting stickers up and getting them off these pieces of paper. Well, that one's not too bad. Harold's thinking ahead there. Yeah, and a good spot for you, Harold. Uh, I don't know. We'll put you right here under the eddies and next to the AVE tap chart. There you go, Harold. Is you? All right. Well, that's a thick sticker. That's a... Uh, did not cheap out on those, Kimber. Nice. <laughs> but in the meantime, I've had some more pressing issues because right now I don't have a four jaw chuck. That's a pretty important tool to have in your shop, especially if you got a lathe. This guy was, you know, it's, it's probably 85 years old. I tried to fix the damn thing. I welded it and this tool steel does not like being welded. Like it was split already and I well put a couple welds on it and I chased the thread. But yeah, it just made it even more brittle and she, she totally gave up the goat now so that was a problem for a long time that split in that screw i think was actually throwing the jaw out so much that i could not get anything to run straight on those two the number two and number four jaws on that chuck so it's always been a battle with that chuck so finally and this is a pretty huge finally got a brand new pratt bernard four jaw chuck eight inch chuck I'm like look at these jaws compared to the old ones they're quite a bit different a little bit bigger a little bit girthier and these are you know really nice there's no there's i haven't really moved them all yet but like they don't have any side to side or up and down i guess that's what a new chuck does i had no idea so you see me trying to face off this nasty old chunk of ductile iron here this was going to be my ah! I'm planning on you. I have to make a whole new uh, back plate for that chuck, obviously. And this stuff is so out of round. You really got to make sure you got the low spots here, otherwise, it could end up bad. But before I start tying into that, I went ahead and I made a mock spindle thread. <laughs>
just so I don't have to constantly pick off the, you know, unthread the chuck and spin it around and try to check it on the, right on the spindle. Because fumbling around with a, you know, a 30 pound chuck with a hunk of metal in it yet is, you know, it's potential to damage your, your spindle threads, I think. So not much to it really. Mostly just practicing the whole pull and pray method or whatever you want to call it. You know, just hitting that mark every time where you're pulling. It's kind of a... It's a bit of an art form. You definitely got to be paying attention. There was a couple times where I, you know, almost had to change my shorts. Those are all just drill bits that people threw away and I re gave them a regrind. You don't need a whole fancy set, but it doesn't hurt either. <laughs> So I'm nowhere near where we're going. I'm just, uh, this kind of feels like actual machining, so I kind of want to get it on film. I've been making lots of goofy stuff lately, so. <laughs> this is some serious business, guys. For a one inch 190. <laughs> Alright, so apologies for the buzzing in the background. I just installed an air conditioner. It has been hot as hell here in the last few days. Hitting uh, very near to 40 degrees C, which is, I don't know what that is. That's almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. Anyways, so the number we're shooting for here for a, for a 3B grade thread. Now this is straight out of the machinery handbook. Now according to this, oh, for an inch and a half eight thread, 3B, B for bore, and number three being the, the best one you can do, that's a machinery, machinery machinist fit. You're shooting for the 1.3650 to 1.3797 on the minor diameter. So those are the numbers we're shooting for. So many stickers! <laughs> okay, joke's over. Thanks for the stickers, guys. I mean it. So this mic'd out at 310 thousandths. We gotta bring it out another 55 thousandths. Okay. Reset our dials here. And since this is kind of actual machining, I am going to be measuring this quite frequently. Because it's not like I got a whole lot of this stuff kicking around. In fact, this is it. Turn the dials if you're measuring an egg. I know that tool tends to deflect quite a bit. So we're at three. 46. We'll dial in another 10 thousandths here. Let's see where we're at here. Same, very close. Your one inch 362 and well, a few tenths, I guess. So I'll leave it where it was. We'll just take up the deflection and we should be okay. Speed it up a bit here, too. Probably way oversized, though. Nope, well, according to this, we're at 300, 1 inch 365 and 5 tenths. Perfect. All right, so it looks like we are all ready to do some threading here. So I watched Joe Pye this morning, and he had a very interesting way of dialing this in, and it, it really takes all the guesswork out of it, and you don't have to do any trig or anything like that. So I'm just gonna take a marker in here. Put a little mark in here. Now I got my compound set to zero. What we're gonna do, use the cross slide and just Barely touch off in there. Kind of hard to see because he did it on the external, but I'm going to do it on the internal. It's got the same basic concept. Here's our touch off. So now I'm going to set the dial. I don't really have to set the dial, it's just easier to 
count. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this compound all the way out, just dial in the depth of thread, which is about 67 thousandths, which is 40, 50, 60, 5, 67, and a bit. And just bring your compound back in until it touches off again. It's really hard to see in there. Now, by only advancing the compound, once this compound hits zero, we have our depth of thread. That's it. Simple. Really not going to be able to give you much of a view here. I'm doing a 5,000. I'm not sure how this cast is going to react with this high-speed steel cutter either, so we'll see. And just to double check our thread pitch, I guess. We really don't have to because I already did this once not too long ago, so yeah, we're looking good. Well, the cutter seems to be holding up. Well, I can tell it still feels very sharp. These big threads kind of generally take quite a while on this thing, so... There's going to be lots of pet multiple passes on here due to the deflection and whatnot. That's the best boring bar I got for this sort of thing. So, I'll get back to you when we start getting uh, close to fitting it up. Well, alright, this is a zero on the dial. Well, theoretically, this should be it, but I have, uh, have it on good authority that uh, we're going to have to do a, a whole bundle of spring passes on here. Yep. <laughs> I think that'll start. It looks pretty flat on the top there still. I'm gonna have to, oh, it's chattering quite a bit in there. It's not good. It's starting. That's all it's doing. We're gonna have to slow it down some more, I guess. Okay, so we're still trying to clear out these uh, chips here. I put a little cutting oil in there. It seems to be reducing the chatter a bit. And I actually took it in another ten thousandths so far. Maybe more. It just it keeps taking more and more and more. So but I haven't got that thing to, to fully thread on yet, so yeah, no, it's just chattering. Yeah. I was just hoping to clean up that chatter in there. It seems to be helping. I'm also taking a bit more of a chip than it was. Right out of the textbook of Kim Brzezelic right here. <laughs> he actually got a hand crank on the back of his little mini lathe there. I imagine that would come in handy for this. There's just such a thing here. Look at all that meat it took out. Damn. That probably did it. I'll give it one more pass like that. Alright, well after a bunch of annoying hand passes, it's got a nice clean thread in there though. It's not it's not a mess or chattery or anything. And even this plug gauge that I whipped up, which is not perfect, mind you, but this is actually a scotch bigger than the actual spindle thread, so if this fits, that's a really tight fit. That's I don't actually don't even want it to be quite that tight, but you know it's got just the slightest bit of wobble in there. So we're gonna flip it all around on the flip this truck around again. Now this has got to fit on here. It's got some play. And all the chucks on are sloppy as hell. This is actually a pretty tight fit. I think I'm going to call that good. So we've got to turn a little thing like this in here. Not much of it, just a quarter inch. I actually overdid it on this one a little bit. Yeah, see how loose that is? I mean, that's that's pretty sloppy, but it's the register that matters. Okay. All right, guys. So I did a little bit of cleaning up on these threads. I actually went back in there and run another pass through there. 
just because what I think happened was uh, I didn't put much of a flat on the tip of this cutting tool. It was pretty sharp and pointy, but I think that's why my depth was a little bit off. Had I had a, a bit of a flat on the end of that tool, I wouldn't have had to add depth to the cut, you know, for said specific eight thread bridge, you know, thread. And I also went in here with the die grinder just to feather off that first start of a thread there so it wasn't like a razor sharp, razor sharp thread to start off with. And now, let's put our board here. The leaf fits good. Starts nice, threads on nice. And so you can see it in there. It's got a little bit of wiggle, not much. And a very nice register in the back there. Okay, first of all, I'm going to take a little bit off the outside diameter here. carbide guys not at all I'm going to speed it up or slow it down that's better let's say I'm getting a little bit more getting a little bit frustrated with the whole carbide thing it's <laughs> it's just not what it's I don't know this lathe just does not like carbide it takes too much tool pressure and it ends up chattering so that's how it should go And that's 40 thou depth of cut, so 80 thou off the diameter. There's an 80 thou depth of cut. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a bit much. <laughs> okay, so this isn't entirely necessary. But it is aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and switch to a so I've gone ahead and switched to a radius tool, and I think that's probably good enough. We'll just give it a sixteenth of an inch uh, indent there. It doesn't need to be lots. Just it's like I said, it's just this aesthetic mostly. We'll try to clean up that finish on there too. Then we can split this, spin this around, and put it on the on the lathe. Might be able to get away with this under power if we slow it right down. I'm hoping we can. Yeah, you dirty bugger. Yeah. Son of a... Well, that's the old fashioned way it is. Okay, I think we got it. <laughs> well, that should look really good. I'm happy with that. Chada. Definitely a little, a little easier to throw on like that. Oh wow, that's perfect. No arguing there. All right, so we got her on the spindle. We got quite a bit to take off of here. We're gonna take the diameter down to size. Looking for about four and a half inches. And then we're gonna face and cut the register and then we'll have to uh, devise a plan for the bolts.
know, it just dawned on me now. That's going to really be hard to get off of there. I'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So I generally don't use carbide in this shop. I generally stick to high-speed steel. It's just, uh, it'll, it'll deal with almost just about anything. Except for this mill scale on this stuff, apparently. I just had to give that another regrind. Now, I'm, I'm assuming this is cast. You can tell by the gray chips and the number of chuck keys in it. Once you get past the chuck keys and the mill scale, she machines beautifully. I really like when things line up like that. She's taking just the skim pass off the old diameter that I turned earlier. Must have done something right. Well, I got a lot of meat to face off here. So, I'll have to get back to you. It's going to be a while. Alright, so I got our back plate all faced up to very near dimensions. Now we're going to have to cut a register in there in order to mount this chuck. You know, according to the verniers or the dial calipers, well, I already measured it. We're looking at 2.995 inches. But I think we could actually probably get a telescoping gauge in there. Ooh, we get to break out the three inch bike. Yeah, we need this guy. And probably the nicest micrometer I have. Ah! Yeah, compared to my other ones, this one is just so much, so much smoother. Oop, a little easier on that. Okay. Get that out of the road for a second here. Ooh, this is a little harder to do with the big ones. And according to this, we're at one or two inch, 996, right? No, two inch, 956 and a few tenths. What the hell am I talking about here? That's not what I measured, is it? I think it probably is. Uh, yeah, 956. Well, in any case, we got our measurements. Okay, so taking our outside dimension, tracking the inside dimension of that, of our chuck register, and dividing it by two gives us 846 thousandths and five tenths, I guess. We're gonna leave it about five thou there though, or 10 thou, just to, uh, so we can dial it in perfectly once we uh, get it, get it like, close. Let's double check our depth here. I guess we just go like this, probably easier. We should be at about 210. Yeah, we're 215, so that's perfect. I was shooting for 225 thousandths in depth, so next pass we'll just bring it in another 10 thousandths. And that is just so we can stick our three inch mic on there and hopefully get a accurate read. Well, might not be that great. We're looking at well, three inches to this size to say. Well, that's about right where I predicted. Let's do this. Big enough. Yeah, I don't think the three inch mic's gonna really cut it. Not quite big enough of a surface there. Well, we'll take off another 10 thou and then go from there, I guess. Thousands to go. 
All right guys, so we got kind of a problem here. That very last pass that I put on there, probably shouldn't have done that. So we got just a little over two thousandths of an inch there. So, I set my automatic center punch to its lowest setting. And there's a little punch mark right there, if you can see it. And I'm just seeing how much metal displacement it creates. And that's, you know, that's not bad. That would, uh, it's about two thousandths. That's on the very lowest it'll go, so. And I'm thinking if I stick this back on the lathe and give it little punch marks all the way around there at uh, regular intervals and then maybe sand it off or file it or whatever until it's really good. So we're going to try that out and hopefully, Christ, I hope that thing works. Okay, so this is my plan. I got the lathe shut off for this. If you look on here, there are 60 holes on this bull gear. So I'm going to take the little center punch and using this as a guide. Oh, there we go. So it's one. One, two, three. Oh yeah. I think it's going to work. That's that. So it's fairly consistent. And yeah, that's definitely. I think if a guy just puts the bolts in now, just bolt right in there. Now I get this off of here. <laughs> I'll unplug this sucker again for sure. We're gonna have to drill some holes in it now. Made a little fixture for that too. And this guy, not exactly a spanner wrench, but it worked pretty damn good the last time. Boom. All right, let's go check it out. All right, I have a feeling this will knock just right in there. With a little bit of help, maybe. Maybe not. Oh, no. That is how it should be. Hopefully it's not running out. It is a four jaw, but I'm just considering how much vibration it might create. In using metal displacement theory, <laughs> if that's what it is. I'm calling it that, okay? So here we go. Oh no, you know what that is? That's my, uh, that's my freaking needles broken again. <sighs> Screw it though. I'm gonna call that good. Now when I was doing my brainstorming, this is what I came up with. That's just for, uh, for that. And then we got our little, uh, punch here. So we know that other unit's not gonna go anywhere. It's a very nice fit. Everything fits really good. Oh, see? <laughs> And that's that. Wow. So yeah, what? It's been like, uh, you know, it's been like three weeks since this hole. Yeah, see? So when I originally drilled this out, I drilled it out to 5 16 thinking that these bolts, I originally thought these bolts were 3 8 16 thread, but as it turns out, they are 10 millimeter or 10 mil bolts, I thought they were 3 8 So, as it were, I didn't have a proper, I had lots of problems tapping this cast before. So I went ahead and I bought a fancy $50 freaking tap, specifically for cast. Now, the last hole I just did is still sloppy. Don't like it, not happy with it at all. I power tapped that one. First one I just hand tapped it. And this one I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to get a decent freaking thread. It is a little bit oversized on the hole because apparently everything millimeter in Canada is twice as expensive. I had to buy, I bought a whole set of letter drills. Anyways, this time around I'm gonna try it with some cutting oil. See if that helps. Finger on the trigger. Now I don't know if cutting oil is bad or if they just say don't use it because you don't really need it or what, but I'm gonna find out, damn it. That's a lot more fun than hand tapping though. Nope, still pretty sloppy. 
I don't get it. This stuff just does not like to be tapped. Maybe a form tap would do better. Like that's that's pretty sloppy. So it's not just me after all. It's this freaking material. Don't just don't like it because that's a, that's a top tier tap. They're saying that ten times fast. Anyways, I'm gonna finish drilling up this last hole. And I'll get right back to you. All right. Please be good. Please be good. Please be good. Please be good. Oop. Oh. It's got more threads than my other chucks do by a lot. Well, it's not jumping across the room. So that's good, I guess. Try to adjust the light here a little bit. Worse, better. More better. Okay. Well, a thousandth. Okay, hold on a second here. I got the test indicator fixed here. And I loosened the bolts out just to scotch and give it a little whack with the old, with my little hammer here. And, uh, well, honestly, that's, that is not bad. It's half a thou at the most. Maybe not even four tenths. So that I'm gonna, I'm definitely calling that good enough. That is really good. I've already even used this once to make what I'm dubbing the three eighths ratchet destroyer, otherwise known as a snipe. Okay, so I dialed this guy in pretty much close to concentric. It's just a plain old piece of three quarter uh, cold rolled, I guess. Yeah, it's uh, flicker than maybe half a thou there or so thou. This is what I could not do before. You know, it's about two thou, three thou maybe. Yeah, it's not even sure if that bar is straight. It's just a scrap piece of bar. But I could not do that before. This was would have been 20, 30 thou out with the old chuck. So this is going to be a magnificent addition to my shop. Huh. So this has been a seriously long and drawn out video. Like, I mean, I started filming this at the beginning of July. And it's like almost the middle of August already. And you can see there's a bunch of non-related, you know, stuff on my bench that even pertains close to machining. <laughs> so I've been kind of busy with an, another project. I'll probably get into that on another episode. In any case, guys, hope you enjoyed that one. I know I haven't been putting out a whole lot of videos, so if you don't want to miss one, uh, you should maybe hit that notification button. I promise you I won't be annoying you every 10 minutes. <laughs> so on that, I'll bid you adieu. Don't forget to check out Harold and Kimber's uh, channels there. And you guys have a super fantastic day. Thanks for watching. Peace out.